Big changes on the outside. The new construction wraps around the original museum. Big changes on the inside. There's 43 different multimedia elements. It's immersive, interactive, and informative. We want to think about how people like to learn today. High-tech history mixed with time-tested touches. Some people love to just look at the artifacts. There's a lot of artifacts. The renovated and reimagined Idaho State Museum will open to the public soon. The long wait almost over. I'm not sure words can explain it because it has been a five-year process. A tour of Idaho's new home of history ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. And welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. The new Idaho State Museum opens to the public this Friday, October 12th. The old Idaho State Historical Museum closed four years ago for the $17 million makeover that added 18,000 square feet of space. State and tribal leaders will cut the ribbon during a ceremony that starts at 9 a.m. on Friday. Then the doors will open at 11. The new version is very different. You'll experience Idaho history in a whole new modern way but the museum does hold on to an antique aesthetic with more than 500 artifacts on display, including some old favorites. Later on in the show, we'll look at why the project took so long, why it cost $17 million, and why leaders decided to change the name from the Idaho Historical Museum to the Idaho State Museum. But first, we're gonna show you around. Idaho State Historical Society Executive Director Janet Gallimore gave me a tour of what visitors will experience. Janet, as we stand here outside the museum, how excited are you for people to finally be able to walk through those doors and, and see what has been created here? Well, Doug, I'm not sure words can explain it because it has been a five-year process, mm -hmm. of course, by the time we had approval to move forward and did all of the pre-planning and then um, all the community engagement and then finally actually got to the point of really installing and making this reality it's such an honor and such a gift and we're we're thrilled how much space have you added and what kinds of work can people see from the outside well the original museum was about twenty eight thousand feet and we've added about eighteen thousand so it's um really great size now and what we have done that really solved a lot of logistics problems is that we've created dedicated space for exhibits, dedicated space for community, sort of using the space, whether it be for programming or whether it be for personal events, and then a beautiful foyer, which will host school children or tourism groups, and then an education space. So all of those things can happen at the same time. Okay, so where are we now? So we're in the foyer, and this is the place that people will enter, they'll be greeted at the front desk, and this is where your experience starts, whether you're a school group of 30 or a tour group or just a family and, or just by yourself. And the idea in the foyer here, why we have this big touch screen map is that it sets up the big idea of the exhibition experience. And that is Idaho's land and the uniqueness of that land being a very irregularly shaped state tucked in and among rectangular states really drove human development over time. And so that idea of land and people shaping each other is the anchor story upon which all of the interpretation of the state history exhibits are told. So here you get a chance to um, learn more about about 70 icons that are natural and cultural. Um, the internment camp internment in Minidoka. Internment camp in Minidoka. You have um, Thousand Springs. So we mixed, we mixed together human sites and then also natural sites so that people got a sense of that landscape. So this is most likely the, the first exhibit that people will investigate when they come? That's correct. So the origins exhibit is really the what we call the orientation exhibit. So what you want to do in this exhibit is set up that big story again. And here you get an, a sense of Idaho's grandeur, the size of the state, the Palouse, the mountains, the sawtooths, what Idaho looks like seasonally. And we talk a little bit again about the relationship of land and people in this exhibit, which is um, an amazing visual overview of Idaho in different seasons. You get a sense of the outside landscape and again, the people interacting with it. So this whole really powerful first experience makes you feel like you're there. We are in the Origins Theater and we worked with each of the federally recognized tribes to get permission to capture the origin stories and then describe them in this beautiful multimedia way. 
And so they start out in the tribal language and then they fade into English and then the story is told by uh, one of the elders or someone from the tribe that the tribe selected. But the story is done in this beautiful multimedia treatment so that it's again very powerful, very captivating. And it sets up the story of the land and people relationship as early as the tribal origin stories. Well, it was a very modest expansion. You know, 18,000 feet is not a lot of space. But because of the way we designed this, it allowed for a lot of being able to experience the visual impact of the exhibits in a very dynamic way. And there's a great blend of artifacts, graphics, multimedia. There's 43 different multimedia elements. And those are really essential for creating a powerful emotional experience. And, and we want to think about how people like to learn today. Some people love to read, so there's a lot of reading. Some people love to just look at the artifacts. There's a lot of artifacts, over 500. There's over 900 graphic panels with foot photography, over 500 artifacts. And then, of course, the multimedia all together designed purposefully to create a very powerful experience. So the idea of how Idaho got its shape was one of the things that we learned early in our um, exploration and, and looking at what scholars said. If you only had one or two big ideas about what could be the most important story about Idaho, invariably they said the shape of the state and how it influenced mm -hmm. the way that we developed and water. So here, right at the beginning of the experience, you get to learn a little bit about how do we get our shape. Have you ever noticed how distinctive Idaho looks amidst the orderly rectangular shapes of its neighbors? How did Idaho's unique shape come to be? Let's find out. Idaho, the land and its people. So again, this gives you a sense as a visitor that you're going to be uh, seeing the state from three different perspectives. Lakes and forests, Salmon River North, the Central Mountainous Region, and then the Snake River Plain. And over here too, you have the, the large panel of the Big Burn, 1910, um, the huge fire that, well, unfortunately killed quite a few people, but also almost destroyed Wallace and right. other towns up north. And it's uh, a, a fire that really kind of set the standard for the way fires are fought today. That's exactly right. And that's why we're, we are a leader in fire management in Idaho. And this experience is um, meant to give you uh, an overview of what it would have felt like to be oh, in really? that fire. So as we do um, push this button, you can you get a sense of what the forest looked like before the fire. You get a sense of, of the lightning and the weather conditions that caused this fire. And then you get a sense of when it reaches the big blow up, how terrifying it must have been. So we did a design build um, process with these exhibits. And we did that purposefully for two reasons, to integrate multimedia, artifact, display, graphics, photography at the front end all the way through. Because if you created an exhibit and then you tried to add multimedia to it later, it would be more difficult and it wouldn't connect the story as well. So by doing this all together, you are able to balance out all of the elements of what we know today is how people like to learn. And some people are very audio learners, some people are very visual learners, some people like to read, some people like to manipulate artifacts. So we wanted to create something that was highly um, designed purposely to create the maximum experience and the maximum learning. So we saw North Idaho, and as you mentioned earlier, people can choose the different regions of the state to check out. This is Central Idaho. Central Idaho. So here you get to understand a lot about recreation, Sun Valley, and going across the Salmon River, beautiful, amazing heart of our state on the Salmon River Scout. You also get to learn a little bit about endangered species. And so this um, animation is all about Lonesome Larry and how, how he was the last surviving uh, sockeye salmon that made it back to Redfish Lake. And he is the grandfather of such sockeye of the, of the present and future. As we mentioned before, you've got this mix throughout of exactly. written word, interactivity, and, and amazing old artifacts. Things. That's right. So, and yes. that was all incorporated from the beginning. From the beginning. That was the thought process. That's the thought process because you want the story is what's most important. And then you figure out how to tell that story by what kind of artifacts you have, what kind of photographs you have. And in the case, uh, we also wanted this to be a statewide effort. So we borrowed photos, got permission to use photos from all over the state so that you'll find 
things that are credited to Boise State or U of I or the Latah County Historical Museum or um, you know all, repositories from all over the state because we wanted to reflect not only our collections but make this be a statewide project. So you get to go through a series of activities that help you understand something better, in this case architecture. You get to order and arrange photos based upon looking at clues. You get to take a look at artifacts and then marry them up with a, um, sort of a, another game and understand a little bit about artifacts that tell a story. In this area, you get to learn about maps and, and overlaying different visuals on top of maps. In this case, it's the map, Clark's map of the United States. You get to learn about United States geography and waterways and what have you. And then you um, end up doing a culminating exercise. You get to learn about um, archaeology and what have you. So this is more in-depth experience, thinking about all of these resources and how to learn more about them. Tell us um, where we are here and how you, this is kind of based on the Smithsonian, as you were saying. Well, we are in the first inaugural exhibit. And it's actually the first exhibit of textiles from the collection. And we're very blessed that Dr. Carol McGregor um, was uh, quite the advocate for us showcasing the textiles we hold in the museum's collection. We have over 12,000 items of historic dress, men's, women's, military gowns. And very few of them could ever be on exhibit before because we just didn't have the space and the gallery set up to do it. And so what are all of these So gowns? these are um, from 1911 to the present, and these are three of Miss Laurie's gowns from the inaugural balls. So this is intensely hands-on, so what you can do is you can put dynamite in the wall and then scream fire in the hole and then, you know, push well, the let's plunger. Do it. So, okay, let's do it. So just stick one in there? Yeah, load it up. All right, we'll do two. Okay, ready? Yep. Fire in the hole. So the kids are gonna love the kids that. are gonna yeah. love this, and then they can put their little mining hat on and go through the mine and look for gems, and you can blow the train whistle, you can learn how to do Morse code. So this is all about hands-on learning through play. So Jim, what is the philosophy in how you approached putting this museum together? Well, Doug, this is, I try to keep it really simple because it's complicated, but I think the, the big thing is you want to do the right thing, and then you want to do it right. It's about vision, it's about planning, it's about engagement, it's about donor interaction, it's about bringing everybody together to be part of the family of this idea. By all of the outreach that we did across the state, and by being purposefully disciplined to stay to the storyline, we created something that we, we know people will love. Now again, the museum opens to the public after a ribbon cutting ceremony the morning of Friday, October 12th. And so how did planners decide what to include and what the philosophy would be on how to tell the story of Idaho? Idaho State Historical Society Executive Director Janet Gallimore will join me in studio next to answer those questions. And we'll talk about the cost and the length of the project. Stay tuned. Need to refresh a room in your home? Yep, this one. Well, right now at Furniture Row, you can get a look you love starting at just 10 bucks a month. 10 bucks a month? That's right, just 10 bucks a month. At Furniture Row, you'll find hundreds of incredible rooms starting at, you guessed it, just 10 bucks a month. Plus 60 months no interest financing. Honey, we're going to Furniture Row! Enjoy the largest selection for the lowest prices guaranteed, only at Furniture Row. We've got ourselves a showdown to be called the best in Texas. And when you only face off once, every four years, well, you better make your shot count. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Cowboys, Texans, all eyes on the showdown, all eyes on Sunday Night Football. Tuesday. Your father's a veteran, so were you able to draw on his experiences? One of the biggest mysteries of This Is Us begins. How can I know so little about my dad's time in Vietnam? And a dangerous procedure. She is having surgery. Everyone is making me feel like I'm gonna die tomorrow. Becomes a life-changing experience. There is no way in hell you should have a baby. What are you guys talking about? 
This is Us, Tuesday on NBC. A near fatal collision tears a family apart. What did I do? You see anything unusual? But was this crash really an accident? I think you tried to kill our son. Chicago Fire, Wednesday at 9, 8 central on NBC. His son's really sick. I love you. You cannot deny that boy a transplant. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I just need a little more time. He doesn't have time. Stand down. Chicago Mid, new Wednesday on NBC. And welcome back to Viewpoint. I'm Doug Petcash. Decisions, decisions. A lot of them have to be made on a project the scale of the renovation of the Idaho State Museum. Among those, how big should the budget be, what exhibits need to be included, and what should the place be called? Joining me now to talk more about the logistics and the philosophy of the new Idaho State Museum is Idaho State Historical Society Executive Director Janet Gallimore. Janet, thanks for coming in studio as well as for the tour of the museum. It's great to be here, Doug. Thank uh, you. Uh, you're welcome. First of all, let's start off with why did the museum have to be closed for four years for this project? Well, there's a lot of behind the scenes work that has to happen in a project like this. First of all, we had to move everything out of the museum, which was quite the project that took about nine months. And we did that with the help of Mountain Home Air Force Base volunteers, which was great. Then we had to do asbestos abatement. That took another nine months. Then, of course, all the building bidding and what have you has to happen. And we had to do the design of the exhibits, which included a nine month um, community engagement process across the state. And of course we had a tough winter, so that put the construction behind. So all in all, it's mostly because of good planning with a little bit of weather interference. And $17 million for this overall project. What did the people of Idaho get for that $17 million? How was that budget spent? Well, $8.9 million was on renovating the building, which was really uh, an amazing investment. Uh, so we renovated 28,000 feet and we added 18,000 feet. So that, 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 and that building was pretty set, mm -hmm. 8.9 million. We really had to stick to that number. And then with the exhibitions, we originally looked at about a $3 million budget for exhibitions. But once we did that state community engagement, we learned that people wanted much more multimedia, interactivity, and more um, immersive exhibits. And so that made us look at alternatives at four million, six million, and eight million for the exhibitions. And with the help of our foundation and doing additional fundraising and with the state of Idaho matching that private money, we were able to look at an eight million dollar exhibition budget. And so about I think 13 million or so was from state money, right? And then right. you also raised four more than four yes, million. Four point three million for this project. Um, now, so there's so much in there and there's so much to see. How do you decide what to put on display and, and what those exhibits would look like? Well, the big thing that we have to do, Doug, is we start with the big idea. And that's why our state historian went around the state talking to university scholars and other scholars, over 50 scholars across the state, to identify if you had one or two big ideas to uh, communicate through a museum experience, what could they be? And that is the idea of the, the shape of the state and Idaho's land and how, how that grandeur of our land shaped human development, commerce and what have you over time and the importance of water. So with those two big anchor ideas, then our state historian wrote about a 20 page white paper that sort of laid out what could those stories look like across the state. And then we decided to interpret the state geographically, Salmon River North, Central Mountainous Region, Snake River Plain, and then layered in stories um, that really kind of fall along the big idea. And that's how you start thinking about the story and then you select artifacts, photos, and build the rest of the experience around those. Well, I mean, you have 50,000 um, artifacts or pieces of, of Idaho history stored. How do you d whittle that down to, what was it, 508 artifacts or something like that? Well, again, it goes back to the story. So yeah. once you have the storyline laid out in your interpretive strategy, then the design team looks for what are the big artifacts, like things like Oregon Trail wagons and mm -hmm. the big piece from INL, the big um, uh, uh, control panel. So you look for where you're going to place the big objects, and then you look for objects that best help to articulate the story and then you make sure that you build the storyline around those. Do you think there's something there for everybody? I mean, you, you talked about it in the piece that, during the tour about how you, know, you think about how people learn today, but it's also kind of about how people learned back in the day because you've got the interactivity that is gonna be great for you know, a lot of people, but also you know, it's just very modern, but you've got the artifacts and you've got a lot of reading. So is it about 
just putting all of that together to give that overall experience to, so that everybody would find a way to enjoy it and interpret it in their own way? I think two big uh, uh, key ideas there. One is, of course, you want to have a mixture of, of style. So you want to have immersive exhibits. You want to have beautiful graphics. You want to have photos, which we tried to source from throughout the state so that all parts of the state would feel part of the museum experience. And of course, artifacts. So you've got a nice blend of what people love to see in museums. But I think the other thing that was very purposeful and by design is to be sure that we wove in all disciplines and in a way that could serve K through career. And so what if you're interested in art, you'll find beautiful art from the collection. Or if you're interested in science and technology, you couldn't get more um, inspired than going down in a mine shaft from seven stories to now 9,000 feet, or figuring out how you got to the top of Baldy on the uh, first uh, chairlift in Idaho. So uh, whether it's science, art, stories, or um, what we would call traditional social studies, there is something for everyone, and that was by design. And now there is that slight change. One of the things that didn't come forward with the museum was the name. It was the Idaho Historical Museum, now the Idaho State Museum, and that was very intentional as well. Why did you decide to change the name that way? Well, two reasons. We wanted to be sure that people across the state felt part of this museum experience. It was very important to us that from Bonners Ferry to Franklin and all parts in between, people felt part of the state museum. So we wanted to be sure that we focused on the state as a whole. And then the second thing is that we, again, looked at history being the mothership of all disciplines, if you mm -hmm. will, and whether you're interested in art or language or science or any facet of Idaho's history, we wanted everyone to feel that history was inclusive of all of those disciplines. So we really wanted state focus in the name, but a multidisciplinary focus for history. Why do you think ultimately it's important to have a place like this in Idaho? Well, I think for a number of reasons, I think Idahoans love their state. So I guess number one is to tell the story in a way that all Idahoans can be proud of their state and have it be a showcase for their region. And the second thing is that history gives identity to community. And when we think about new people coming to the state, which there are a lot, there is a way to share our story with them so that they can feel part of that in terms of the context of their own individual experience. And then, of course, as a showcase for our state, one of the things from the business community's point of view and from, of course, our government point of view is they want a place where businesses will be inspired to relocate and businesses like great places like museums and other amenities if they're going to move their companies and families here. All right. Well, stay right where you are. We've got one more segment to go. So still ahead this morning, we're going to wrap things up by letting you know how much it will cost for you to visit the new Idaho State Museum. Stay tuned. It's one of the most anticipated midterm elections in history. Turn to NBC News for expert political coverage. Every single vote really does count. If you get elected to the Senate, would you support an effort like that? In-depth analysis of every race from across the country. This is the district the Democrats think is one of the most flippable in the country. Do you feel like an underdog in this race? To your local team. It's been a long time since we've seen this kind of energy. How will it impact you? Join NBC for complete coverage of Decision 2018. The things that give our lives meaning and joy can also be a struggle to manage. Sometimes that leaves us feeling not so great. Somewhere in between perfection and not is a life in balance. It's what we're talking about Sundays on the News at 10. One of the hardest parts for me is not exactly knowing. And when I went into my next pregnancy, not knowing what I should do differently. Pregnancy and loss and helping families heal. Life in balance tonight, News at 10. comes down to this moment. Now starting to pull away. There she goes. This has been her destiny all along. Dressel gets it done. The dream has come true. America can't get enough of TV's number one new show, Manifest. Since I've been back, I'm different. You're one of the chosen. The victim was from Flight 88. It's the reason that she was killed. 
This is about every person on that plane. Any one of us could be next. All I wanted for so long was to have you back. We're being targeted. I need to protect my family. Who are you? Manifest, Monday, after The Voice on NBC. All right, so we've told you what's inside the new Idaho State Museum, so how much will it cost to get you inside <laughs> the museum? Here are the admission prices for you. For adults 18 to 59 years old, the admission price is $10. For children, it's $5. For students with ID, for seniors 60 and over, and for veterans, admission is $8. Idaho State Historical Society Executive Director Janet Gallimore has been my guest today. So Janet, are there other deals or memberships that go in along with those different price points for the different groups? Yes, Doug, there's a wide range of opportunities and if people join as members, then they do get admission complimentary and there's different levels of membership. So depending upon your package, whether it's for a family or, or an individual, there's different benefits. And so um, we do, we will have discounts throughout the year for special uh, purposes, but there's a, there's a way for everyone to experience their new state museum. And um, how did you come to those, those prices for um, the different groups? Well, we were very blessed. Um, the State Historical Society is expected to be as self-sustaining as possible, as is the new museum. And so we look at a, a mixture of revenue sources to help us operate. And we were able to do a business plan that helped us look at what was comparable pricing in, in, the, in Idaho museums and in the Northwest. So we really tried to set those prices as uh, comparables to other organizations. And since this is an amazing facility with all new amenities, it's certainly um, a great value for, the, for people's uh, opportunity for admission. And uh, just a little bit of time we have left, ultimately what do you hope a visitor gets out of an experience there? Well, what I hope is that people come away with the understanding a little bit about Idaho's history and the context for their life today, because this is not about looking internally at what the museum does. It's looking at our service to the state. And we want every single Idahoan to feel part of the Idaho State Historical Society family and part of Idaho history. And they can do that at the Idaho State Museum. Well, again, it opens October 12th, this Friday, to the public at 11 a.m. ribbon cutting ceremony from 9 to 11, right outside the new Idaho State Museum. Janet, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Well, that is all of our time for this week's Viewpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Doug Petcash. I'll see you tomorrow on today's morning news and then right back here next Sunday morning for another Viewpoint.